All right. Welcome, everybody, to Horticulture Corner Showtime. We are so excited to have everyone here today. My name is Denise Reagan. I'm the Executive Director of the Garden Club of Jacksonville. And I'm here with Jill Zarletta, our Marketing and Membership Manager, who's helping us out with the Zoom and other duties. I'd like to thank the Jesse Ball DuPont Fund for their generous grant that allows us to expand programming just like Horticulture Corner. I'd also like to thank our co-chairs of Horticulture Corner, Mika Hardison and Susan Painter, who's here with us in the audience today. I'd like to tell you about a couple of programs that are coming up in the Horticulture Corner series. On October 4th, we have Farm to Fork with Ashante Green of Green Legacy Farm. Green is her last name and green is what she does. And uh, she's gonna be telling us about um, the Farm to Fork movement and um, how you can eat sustainably and locally. We also have on November 1st, Mad from Mushrooms with Tim Armstrong of Eat Your Yard Jacks. If you want to raise mushrooms or maybe you just wanna eat them, um, he's gonna tell you how to do that and uh, what to look for. And um, if you have never tried to grow mushrooms before, it's a good time to give it a shot. And then on December 6th, we have Go Native with Nicholas Freeman of Waka Palatka, um, which is his native landscaping company. And he's gonna tell you how you can use native plants in your yard and landscape. And uh, we're really excited to have him and uh, this whole series of speakers. If you are not a member of the Garden Club currently, there's always a good time to join. You just go to our website and check out the membership page. Uh, click the join button on the front page and learn more about how you can become a member. Or you can ask me or you can ask Jill um, or give us a call at the Garden Club office. And now it is my distinct pleasure to introduce our speaker for the day. Aline Clement has been a master gardener for 16 years. In that role, she helps conduct Florida-friendly yard reviews, providing feedback on how to and how um, how um, homeowners. Let's try that again. Providing feedback on how homeowners can incorporate more of the nine Florida-friendly principles in their landscapes. In 2022, they have completed more than 50 yard reviews, and they're still accepting applications. Aline also writes for the Master Gardener Volunteer Newsletter, Roots to Shoots. She has judged the Greater Jacksonville Agricultural Fair Horticulture Show three different times. For about seven years, she chaired the Garden Club's annual horticulture show held in conjunction with the Flower Show and Home Tour. Aline is a Garden Club of Jacksonville member and a member of the Wildflower Garden Circle. And we are so happy to have her here with us today. If you have questions, please, if you're on Zoom, post them in the chat. And if you're here in person, we have a microphone for you to go so that we can capture your question on the recording. And now I'd like to turn it over to Aline. Um, so um, the handout will um, put that link into the um, chat okay. um, so that people can download it as well. Thank well, you. It's, a, it's a, a really good document. And if you're planning on entering um, in the horticulture show, you will want to have this with you because it gives you all the information you need about uh, when, when to when to bring your plants in, uh, what you need to do, and uh, how to how to what prizes you've got, all those things. So, I have done this quite a few times with the garden club, and lots of times people don't realize how important it is to groom your plants to make sure that they're in show worthy condition. And looking at this, I, I'm not going to go through all of it with you, but on the rules, I wanted to point out a few things. You want to make sure you've read this through. Be, be very, be, um, read it through carefully. Uh, all horticulture exhibits must be fresh and show worthy, and they must have been in your possession for a certain amount of time, depending on the type of the plant. 90 days, 45 days, and that's all laid out right in here. If you don't know a common plant name for your plant and you don't know the botanical name, you need to do a little research. You can go online, uh, you can Google the plant if you've got a common name and you will probably be able to find a botanical name. Um, if you don't have even the common name, there's an app, there are many apps and there are many ways you can look that up on the internet, but there is a really good app that you can go to called PlantNet. And you take a picture of the plant and you then submit it 
say, yeah, that's the picture I want to send. You submit it, and then they'll come back to you with the botanical name. Then what I normally do is I'll go on to Google and I'll enter that botanical name and see what comes back. And if it matches, then I'm happy and I accept that. So I've done that with all of the ones I brought today. Let's look at preparation, because that's the big thing. You want to take a plant that really might win a prize. There are some, some uh, monetary awards, and it goes from $25 for the overall best of show on down to uh, blue ribbons, $3, red ribbons, 2 and white ribbon, 1 and then there's awards of merit. They're all different kinds of awards that the judges pick that day. But so, isn't the real world, is the real awards like bragging rights? Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? Well, the money, you know, the money's not going to pay for the plants and all the, what you do to, to uh, get them ready, but certainly bragging rights are, are really nice, yeah. too. Uh, there's a list of the show winners, I think, on the, on the website and who won last year. And we're gonna show you a few of the winners after, after I've gone through this. Let's talk about preparation. That's the real important thing. You want to repot your plants well ahead of the show. I brought quite a few plants today that I will put up front here after we've gone through these rules. And then you can tell me if you think it's ready to go to the fair, okay? So let's, let's look at it. Don't overpot or underpot your plant. The plant should be the right size for the pot. If it's a big plant, put it in a big pot. <laughs> if it's a little plant, a little pot is fine, as long as it's a mature plant. You don't want to put a, a really young plant that hasn't had a chance to grow yet. Exhibitors should prepare and groom entries. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Make sure your pots are clean, not broken, or cracked. Most of mine are cracked, <laughs> I have to say. Uh, the plant should be full, mature, and centered in the pot. That may seem like kind of a picayune, but centered in the pot really makes it look more full. If the plant is being exhibited for blooms, it should be in full bloom. Unfortunately, I don't have anything in bloom today. This is not the time of year that my, my those kinds of plants are blooming, but I guess some of the succulents might be and some of the um, bromeliads might be. Uh, if you need to water the plant during the week, water them before you bring it. But if you need to water during the, the show week, because it's, it's a long week, uh, you may want to come by and, and, and put some water in or, or leave the instructions with the, with the staff. Yeah. And we will, you know, there will be watering, but uh, definitely if there are special instructions, yeah. Yeah. like don't water it until yeah. or that sort of thing. We Absolutely. Just, we want to know. <laughs> They'll be there every day to care for and make sure your plants are, are uh, doing well. You will have an entry sheet that you will fill out and and then for each of your plants, you'll fill out a separate card. So one entry sheet and then the separate cards to go with each. And that's where you're going to be entering the botanical name and the common name. And that's what's going to save you a lot of time when you bring your plants in, especially if you bring more than one. Because if you do that ahead of time, you'll, you'll, this process will be very, very fast. Um, let's see. If you need assistance, though, you can, you can ask when you, when you bring them in. Okay, so I'm going to bring up a plant, first of all, and I'm going to ask you if you think this is a show-worthy plant. Now, somebody might need to come up here and take a close look, because the judges can't touch it, but they can look at it carefully, and you're going to want to make sure no bugs, no dead leaves, no trash in the plant, the pot is clean, and the plant is full and healthy. You might want to hold it up for the people who are watching on camera okay. so they can see it. There you go. There we go. Yeah. See, this is a this is a what's called a silver mist begonia. It likes the shade and it makes a wonderful hanging basket, as you can see. It's not show worthy, I'll tell you. It's not. First of all, it's so pretty. Well, <laughs> pretty is as pretty does. <laughs> there are there are some ragged leaves. Can you see this? It's not a not a perfect leaf. Cut it out. That's what's called grooming. Here's one that was dead. See, I fooled you, didn't I? You thought it was ready. I would go through this plant. I would make sure that each leaf, see, something was eating on this one. So I'll go down and cut that out. Isn't that nature? 
Well, yeah. <laughs> Most, I mean, if this was a, probably just something bit on this one, I'm thinking. Um, I don't have a lot of, of bugs. I don't have a problem with bugs in my garden or in my, where my pots are because I have lots of lizards and they help take care of the insects that would hurt my plants. So keep, keep your little sentinels, your lizards happy and they'll, they'll do good for you. Oh, there's one. There's a good one. Let's see. Is that showing up on me? Yeah, just on the edge there it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there we go. Lovely. That looks like something for Halloween, <laughs> actually. Okay, so this one probably needs a little more work. I do have um, small gra pea gravel in there. Just kind of keep it, keep it um, soil in if it rains or something, because this one stays outside. But uh, you can have gravel or mulch in there if you want. That's, that's allowed. The little decoration that's sticking out, does that go for the show? Not, not. You're probably not going to want to put that in, mainly because it might, might end up being picked up and taken away. These were some lights that we had that stopped working. My husband added that to it. So I, I like putting, uh, I like yard art and I like plant art. So here we go. Put it back in if it'll go in with all those. Okay, there's number one. Yes. Um, and if you don't mind, if you could use the um, microphone and Jill can help you take it to you as well. Thank you, Sam. Um, I had attended a horticulture program. This was a few years back. And the gentleman that was doing the instructing, he was talking about getting plants ready to show. Mm -hmm. And one of the things he had said was if a leaf was damaged to trim it. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask you about that. You can do that. And I have some examples up here. I'm going to show you what okay. to do with that one. So with, the, with these that you saw here, they were, they were ragged. They, they were not good. And I would, if I were going to enter this one, I would go back around and make sure there were no other ones that were damaged like this one. So I must save that one for last. This is, this is one I'm particularly proud of. Anybody know what it is? Yes, it is. Grew it from the top of a pineapple that we ate at home. And it is a beautiful plant. I've got probably four or five of them, some from last year that I planted. And we had actually a little, little pineapple on it and something ate it before I had a chance to try it myself. It was beautiful. It was turning, turning yellow and smelling really good. And I, I had a battle with something with my tomatoes this year too. But that really irritated me because it was only one kind of so sad. But anyway, so now I have four new ones and I'm putting them out in the yard shortly. So this one, I would say this one, the pot is not really attractive. It's one that you would grow it in. If I were going to, to exhibit this, I would take the leaves out that have fallen in from around. Don't leave any of that in there. If there are any, I already groomed this one some time ago and cut the the bad leaves out of it, and it started doing a whole lot better. But I would put this in a pot. But this is this. Does the pot look appropriately sized for you? What do you think? Yeah, it's okay. So I wouldn't put it in a real big one. When I put it in the yard, it's going to get to be a really big plant. Okay. Here's the next one. I don't know if the, the people at home can see this. All right, it's not ready for show, is it? What would you say? The pot needs to be washed. It's dirty. You can see around here, this is an old orchid pot. This is called, what's this one called? This one is called a triangle or fairy tale cactus. This would be great in one of those miniature gardens because it's so cute. It's got so many little babies come up and I've seen where they get much bigger, but this one really needs to be in a pot about half this size because it's really dwarfed. But washing the pot, how can you do that with the plant in it? Would you use, sometimes I will put, a, have a big pot, a big uh, barrel of bleach water. And as, as I empty pots, I'll put them in that, let them soak for a few days and then brush them out. If you've got plants in them, you either need to take them out or you can use any number of ways to clean them. Tell the kind of secrets. Couple of secrets. <laughs> okay. White vinegar. One part vinegar, ten parts water, and you would soak it in that, and then 
I like a good stiff brush. This one's really stiff. I like for really tough ones. Oh, I thought I put oh, my metal brush. Got to be careful because there's some sticky stuff that really hurt. That really gets the pots clean. Um, I, for this one, though, I think what I would do is I would make up my mixture and use something like a sponge. And these are really good because they are they have the scrubby on one side and the sponge on the other. So you can soak it with the um, water and vinegar and then use the scrubby to kind of get it off. I'm not going to try to do that here because it gets kind of messy. But another way you can do it, <clears throat> believe it or not, hydrogen peroxide. This is a wonderful stain remover for your laundry. So why not try it with this? So I started using it with the pots and it works very well. I use about half and half water and, and peroxide. I don't soak it. I use a sponge to put it on the pot and then scrape it off, okay? If things are really tough, you use a toothbrush and some good old baking soda. Well, it's not showing you very well. Toothbrush and baking soda will get those really stubborn stains off as well. You know, you end up with pots that have the white mineral deposits. You know why that is? Your water has a lot of minerals in it. If you use, if you have a rain barrel and you get your water from the rain barrel, you won't see this. I have rain barrels. I have four of them in my, in my garden and I use them a lot. This is an old one that it's also cracked, so I couldn't use it. But this one, all of that would come off. This has still got dirt inside. I told you it cracked. Okay, so this is this is a good one to use for that, to use the, the, the cleaning supplies and the wire brush, some of these concoctions, and they will all be good for you. And you can do it with the plant in there. It won't hurt the plant. Okay. Vinegar. Peroxide, Vinegar. baking soda. Absolutely. All things you have around your house. Good to have some scissors. And um, this is another good brush that I use a lot because the handle goes way down in there. Okay. Now, this is an allocation. Lots of different kinds of allocation. It's looking pretty healthy. What would you say I'd need to do with that one if I wanted to enter it? The black pot is, is kind of standard for me when I'm, this one has several plants growing in here. If I were going to get ready for a plant sale, I would probably divide it out and put it in another black pot. But for show, you want to have it in a nice pot, clay or, or ceramic of some sort. And that's about it for this one because it's really looking good. Okay. Oh, we have a question from Jill. Yes. Um, would it be acceptable to leave it in like the plastic nursery pot and put that inside of a better looking one? They they don't really like to see double potting. That's what they call it. Uh, it's it's discouraged. So I would I would suggest moving it uh, to a, a nicer pot. A clay pot is fine. It's just the black nursery pot is kind of common. Uh, you probably could get away with that because the, the judges will not touch your, your plant. So if you need to, if you if you don't want to put it in a in a pretty pot uh, for for the long haul, you could probably get away with it. But uh, they say don't do it. Probably you don't want to do it. Any others? Okay. We have another one. I'll hold that one up so everybody yeah, can see it a little low. Yeah. This is a fishtail fern, sometimes also called an elkhorn fern. It does it's look a, like fishtails. It does look like a fishtail, <laughs> doesn't it? This particular one has dead leaves, so you'd have to clean that out. It also has leaves. Now, this is where we can do some trimming, okay? It also has leaves that are brown on the end. So if I were going to enter this one, first of all, this one is not, it's not a very not in good shape for, for showing right now. So what I'd need to do is probably uh, put a stake in the middle for a while and try to train it to stand up a little bit more or to maybe shift it around a little bit. With, you can use um, the little things that you buy to, to uh, do a shish kebab and you can <laughs> go in here and put it, try to 
get it to go around and then by the time you enter it, you can take the sticks out and it'll probably stay. But this one, I usually use clippers or scissors when I'm going to work on it. I'm not sure you're gonna be able to see what I'm doing here, but I would clip it, try to clip it like this. This, but I'm gonna take this leaf out and show you how I would trim it, okay? So I would just go around the edge because it's not an even edge anyway and kind of leave it like that if you wanted to get rid of the edge there on the side. It's not great, but it's better than pulling the whole leaf out. There's another one in here the same way. There's another kind of plant that has leaves that if they, this is a, this is called um, a felt tongue fern, felt or tongue fern. And it's a great shade plant and a ground cover because it spreads. It's, it's um, got kind of a brownish on the bottom and a beautiful shiny green on the top. Great, great ground cover. This one has a leaf that's not so hot. But I would probably leave it because the leaf provides the food if I could trim it properly. Now, this one seems to have a point on the end. You can either fold it right on the seam and cut it like this to get a, or you can just trim it so that you get the point on the end and get the dead part off. Yes. They get a little bit brown. Yeah, that's probably a good idea just to do it right before you take it. Just a reminder, we really love to capture all the questions on the recording. Um, oh. And so if we don't get that, yeah. I can just repeat the question. Yeah, she, she asked if, if we should do this in lots of time before or right before. And I, I would suggest right before. That would be, I would remove the dead leaves, remove the ones that can't be salvaged. And then a few days before, a day before, you're going to trim up the ones that are left that need to be trimmed. Okay. So, and this one also has some trash in it. <laughs> I'll get a haircut right before. It needed, it needed one. That one doesn't flow like the others do. Okay. Oh, here's one. So I do have a question on Zoom. Mm -hmm. uh, we have um, someone who says, I have a plant that I'm thinking about entering. It's quite large though. And I've currently got it potted in a 31 gallon metal trash can that's been painted wow. to look less like a trash can. Would that be acceptable or should it be repotted into something else? Ah, that's a good question. Um, I've never seen one in a garbage can before, but uh, <laughs> could that go in special containers? <laughs> it would be patio <laughs> patio plants are special containers for sure, because the patio plants are the ones that are so big that you have to probably bring them in on a hand truck. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's up to you. You bring it in in the trash can, you might want to decorate a little bit. I mean, yeah, it sounds like she's already painted it, so yes, yeah. you know, a little yeah. more presentable. Probably so. That would be good. Okay, it says, about, it's a seven foot two fiddly fig. Wow. Growing in a pot. Wow. wow. Those grow in the ground here very well, too. Wow. I say, I say yes. Bring so it everybody's in. very impressed. Yeah. Please enter it. Absolutely. <laughs> we want more members to, to and more people to sign That's up right. for this because it's really a lot of fun. Okay. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah. Kind of sad. That's so cute. This is one of those um, succulents that. It really needs a little help. And it's okay if you stake it to make it stand up better. This one had this one had a beautiful flower. And I will cut off the stem of that flower because it's long gone. But it has a, it really is kind of a nice little succulent. It has pretty color on it. Uh, how about the pot? Is that okay? Is it the right size pot for it? I think so. Yeah. There's some things down in it that I would probably clean out a little bit more. But other than that, and you can do this. Yes. You enter it with the stake. Yes, you can stake it. You can stake it, but I would try to attach it in some way. You know those those wonderful um, what are the wraps that have the stuff that sticks together. Velcro, thank you. Velcro, those are wonderful. I, I use that all summer on my tomatoes, and uh, I use it quite frequently with some of my other plants that need some support. But it's okay. I would I would try to make it as um, non 
you know, visible as yeah, inconspicuous as possible. But yeah, it's okay if you do that. Again, all of that is in these, these rules. Okay. Okay. Again, pot size. The oh, size of the pot. Do you mind holding that up a little yeah. bit? There we go. Yeah. Thank you. Size of the pot. It's about the right size for the pot. I could have it in that pot if I wanted to or another, but the type of pot, again, it's one of the nursery type pots. This one has, it's a, let me make sure I've got it right. It's a blade plant, Dromanthia thalia. And it's a green and purple version of the, the one that you've seen that is white and pink and green. That's for shade. It's a shade loving plant. And this one will get this tall in the shade. And it loves it, but it likes a lot of water. So you got to make sure you put it where you've got a little bit of moisture in the soil. But this one would be a nice one, I think, to, uh, to exhibit. Seeing as how it's got a leaf that has holes in it. <laughs> <laughs> Again, something had a, had a nice dinner there. And it's got some leaves that, are, uh, that need to be trimmed and some that need to be completely removed. But other than that, I think it, it needs to go in another pot to, to show. It's not huge, it's, but it's still not juvenile either. A lot of people would keep this as a house plant, just like this. Okay. That's really cute. I like that plant. I like it too. I like the color. We all have plant MD right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is sometimes called cast iron, not cast iron, mother-in-law tongue. You've seen the big ones that get so tall. This one's a bird's nest, I think, a, a nest of the same variety. And it has a baby coming in, which it tends to do. Again, right size pot. I wouldn't put it in a bigger one, would you? No. But what would I do about this one, maybe? Leave it, take it out, just have the, the other one. You want to do that in plenty of time, though, because the it's up against this side of the plant, and it's going to be a little bit flat on that side if you don't take it out. But I would repot it in about the same size, a nicer pot. Again, this is a you know a nursery pot, and just start this one going somewhere else. But anyway, that's a that's a, that would be okay to do that one. Oh, let's see. All right. It's a jungle back here, let me just tell you. <laughs> it's like a clown car full of plants. Okay. <laughs> now this one, you probably know what this is, ponytail. It has been out in the yard most of the summer, and it is, it's showing signs of the varying levels of water that it's received. This will get huge if you put it in a bigger pot. But in this pot, it stays the same. It's been in that pot for about three years. What, would I do, what should I do with this one? Take all the brown ones off. If I can, I can trim and leave a short one with the, or I can take that off altogether. But anything that's got the brown end, I would take off. And this one needs to come out altogether. And so does the one next to it. So for those, if they're right on the outside edge, you can kind of pull them back gently and they'll come right off. So if you can see this at home. What's it called again? Ponytail plant. It's a succulent of all things. This one also is close to our bird feeder. So it has lots of seed shells in the base and inside here. So I, I would, I'm not going to do that now, but I would clean that out with a toothbrush or, or some other small brush, get all of those out and make sure that was clean down in there. But the pot is fine for it and this would be show worthy, but it still has a lot of problems. These up here, something has been nibbling. So cutting those to make them a little more pointed. But it's in it's in pretty good shape other than that. Most of the ones you leave outdoors, they're gonna they're gonna have problems like this. Now, I think that's one more to go. And that's one I'm gonna show you. This is one that someone gave to me. She was leaving town and her mover wouldn't take it. She thought he put all her plants in the moving van. And he wouldn't. Oh, it's a gorgeous bromeliad. The red color is just beautiful. But look over here. This, this is the parent plant that has 
has bloomed and after it blooms it generally dies so i'm going to need to pull i need to separate it and get it out of there all these dead leaves need to come out but if i do it i will have a nice plant let me show you i've been wanting to do this anyway for a couple of weeks now <laughs> but i would use this pot the right size good color okay i'm gonna have to take it completely out do you need to move that so that it won't fall down on you hmm? you need to move it up so the oh, container won't okay. fall down on you <laughs> thank you for watching out for me Denise. i don't want you to have a disaster okay so, so we're gonna throw it. <laughs> so this one is it's still it's still alive it just doesn't look very good the center is dying back so i'm gonna have to pull it pretty forcefully and maybe even break it the nice thing about bromeliads is maybe we cut it. The nice thing about bromeliads, they're very forgiving. I like them in the ground because they give you a lot of color. They help to keep the weeds down because they use a lot of space. I even have some that are growing up my palm tree. They attach and they're going up and they've got color on them. So it really looks lovely. This one actually has two. So I could put them together and I probably will, but now I've got to try to center it. Bromeliads don't take up many nutrients by their roots, you know, where they get their nutrients from in the cup. Um, and they store water there. When I came in, I dumped the water out. So, and we ended up still with a mosquito floating around. <laughs> you probably, if you're going to have a lot of bromeliads, you might want to get some of the tomato, uh, tomato mosquito dunks to put in the cup and you can get it as granules and just put a few granules in there that'll he help keep the mosquitoes down okay so i think that one with a little more soil i would maybe leave the two together and it would be a lovely lovely plant okay questions i've shown you all my ugly plants <laughs> <laughs> and this one if i stuck it in the ground i don't it's still got a stalk it might send out another shoot, but I don't know if that's worth it or not. So this one might, you might see this one in the fair. It's going to take a little bit of trimming, but overall without that in it, it looks nice. Okay. Questions? I was looking at the, <laughs> um, at the category for harvested vegetable mm -hmm. and how would you, I, I'm just thinking about a shishito pepper plant that I have, which is still just producing like crazy. How would I prepare that to enter? Well, you could show it as the whole plant, if it looked show worthy, if you felt like you, you could do it that way, or you could harvest the peppers, and they're going to have a plate for you to put them on, and you will, you just need to identify you know both the botanical and the common name but i yeah you know you've got two choices or you can pick them and give them to me i like them blistered <laughs> with a nice <laughs> ioli so either way you know they say they say you have to have your plant for 90 days but if you're growing lettuce it's going to be ready in 30 days so <laughs> if you wanted to bring in lettuce i mean you could even you could even enter that if you have a pretty lettuce plant Nothing better than this. We do have a question on Zoom. Are there any popular plants to avoid or categories that you recommend? Well, don't bring anything that's considered uh, invasive, right? Um, you don't have to worry about whether it's poisonous or not, really, because most plants have some poisonous feature to them. Uh, for instance, the tomato, everything in the tomato is poisonous except the tomato. You don't want to eat tomato leaves. You don't want to eat the stalk. It's a nightshade in the nightshade family, so that's pretty pretty bad if you eat that but love those tomatoes um you don't want to bring in um let's see what would anything that's too big for you to handle for sure i mean yeah but i don't think there's anything to hold you back as long as it fits one of those categories and you can look that up on the internet to see what would where it would fit any others uh not right now but um if you'd like we can take a look at some of last year's winners and you can talk about this the what we can look at some of last year's winners oh, of talk about those. let's do that last year's winners all right we've got some um some with the um 
red, white, and blue ribbons, and Second. they will be up on the screen. All right, so these are from the, I can never pronounce the word. Gisnerians. Gisnerians. <laughs> This African is the Violet African family, Violet family. <laughs> and I, I asked her to show all three of them because there weren't there weren't very many. And as I recall, it was a difficult judge, you know, to judge those. But this was the first place winner. Gorgeous plan, not nice and rounded. The, it was blooming as it should be, and um, it was it was a gorgeous plan. What's the next one? That would be the red ribbon. That was second place. Can you tell why that might have been second place instead of blue or first place? It's a little lopsided. It's not as, you know, as rounded, pretty, and full as that one, but it was a beautiful plant. The flowers were over on one side. Okay, what about the third one? What do you think about that one? That was third place in that category. Oh, it's, it's not as full. Yeah, it's not as full, not as symmetrical for sure. It was still a beautiful plant. And I did want to um, say that we have uh, the owner of a couple of these plants in the audience. Uh -huh. Christine Marr from the fair is joining us tonight. Um, <laughs> so uh, which one of these? <laughs> well, there weren't very many, that's for sure. But that first one, that one was absolutely gorgeous. It was, I remember it. Remember it well. Please do. <laughs> okay. Let's look at the next. Are we going to have any more of hers? <laughs> I don't want to I say think anything. That was all. Ugly. She's the she's definitely an African violet mama. So, oh yeah. yeah. Well, you, know, right. you know what they had, they're supposed to look like, but they were they were all beautiful plants. Yeah. Just, all right. That was that, that was the distinction between blue and, and red and white. Begonias. Okay. Begonias. This one was gorgeous. Gorgeous. It was. Um, it's in the same family as this one. It's like a star begonia kind of center, uh, but the colors were beautiful. Just gorgeous. That was a blue ribbon. Did that one win anything else? Do you see something else on there? I can't. Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I think it was just yeah. But yeah. I mean, that, it's gorgeous. fantastic. We're not showing you all by any means. Yeah. But these were. And all of these are on the blog post that we mm -hmm. um, posted in the um, uh, chat on uh, Zoom earlier. Yeah, you can see all of them if you want to see what what won. Yeah. Okay. Now we look at uh, the ferns. Yep. Gorgeous. <laughs> Couldn't even see the pot. It was so beautiful and full. It's like Beautiful. a floating head. <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely. Okay, next one. All right, succulents. That's my personal favorite. This one was a red ribbon. Uh, the I believe the first place was a was a big um, devil's backbone, mm -hmm. as I recall, and it was it was beautiful. But I thought this one was was notable as well, very much so. This is the um, is that the one with that's in the head no 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 that one's that one is gorgeous too that's a beautifully planted beautifully grown uh, it just wasn't quite as as nice as the one prior to it we'll, we're going to see one in a minute that's really fun bromeliads yeah. okay <laughs> if someone were to submit that and they brought like a like a block to put it on so that the things dangle down is that allowed are you allowed to bring i off? believe i believe we did allow that didn't we last year didn't we have some of those where you, if you so. wanted to bring your own uh you know, like if i were going to take this one i probably would take this off and then have it on something so you could see you know we will have chains that will be for all the hanging plants mm -hmm. um so uh anything that is hanging can be presented that that's, way that's really good right there i love that plant yeah. beautiful okay next Bromeliads. Yeah, okay, there are lots. I mean, bromeliads, you can't even begin to know the names of all of them, <laughs> but they're, they're, they're some of, along with succulents, they're some of my favorite garden plants. I like them in the garden. They don't like a lot of sun, but they will certainly fill in and, and help keep those weeds down. Oh my goodness. And that one was particularly pretty in the way that it was, uh, it was fill, filling out pretty evenly. There's one side that's a little bit more, that's why it's a red ribbon and rather than a blue, I guess. All right, special container. Okay, plants. this is like where we have the trash can. <laughs> trash can. Okay, this is this is kind of a common thing to do. If you have, I have one at home, a head, <laughs> and I, that's exactly what I planted in it because it once the once it gets full and it looks like Medusa, Medusa's, and that one won both the blue ribbon and I believe that was a um, best in show. Mm -hmm. um, that was not best in show. It was. Um... 
Judge's yes, choice. Judge's or, choice. Okay, correct. It was so humorous for sure. <laughs> okay. And this was a dish garden that had only one type of, I believe that's only one type of succulent in there, but that's that was also considered a, a special container. Patio plants. And here we go with the big ones, the trash can. This is crown of thorns, yes. I believe, and they can be beautiful. And that's about the only thing I have blooming in my yard right now. Well, I take that back. I have lots of yard plants that are blooming, but that's one that, it, that I have in a pot. But I've got my, believe it or not, I found a piece of a hollowed out palm tree. I don't know how it got hollowed out, but I put it on the ground, filled it with soil and put that in it. And it's, it's loving it. It's doing great. You don't have to have a pot, but I wouldn't be able to bring it in because it doesn't have a bottom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hydroponically grown. These are the ones that are require a lot of water. This was a pitcher plant, I believe, and it, it was beautiful. And I believe this also won the audience favorite award. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? I beautiful. Think so. I have a hard time growing those because of right. Yeah. All right, all other blooming plants. Another crown of thorns, I believe. Yes. Yes. And this one, you can see it won lots and lots of things. Yes, it did. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's I even, might have won best of show, I believe, as yeah. well. Yes. It's even, it's, you know, it is blooming profusely and it looks very healthy. For sure. All other foliage? Yeah. I had that one, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> That was a really pretty plant. I mean, I just like the markings on that one for sure. It was a little bit small, so it's a white ribbon, but it was very well grown, very, very healthy. And that was it. All right. So those but are you can see many more examples yes. on the website because there's that was only probably a tenth of what's out there. Yeah. <laughs> and I uh, just wanted to remind everybody about the call for entries. Mm -hmm and uh, that you can download that on our website and also on the fair's website. And um, yeah, and so um, if you don't mind, if you could bring up the entry card and, and hand that to Eileen. Look at that. So we have an oh, entry yes. card fresh from the printer. And this would be very good to have ahead of time because you can fill it out before you even take the plant in. Can they get them ahead of time? Uh, uh, not really, not. Okay. sadly, yeah. Okay. Um, so just make sure you have all your information ready when you come especially if you're bringing five or six, seven, eight plants. And do clean yeah. five, six, let's, or seven. Let's have eight a lot of them. Plants. Yeah, let's definitely have a lot of them. <laughs> Beautiful. It's got the all the information you need. Yeah, and here's the, the, um, the link for the uh, download for the call for entries. So we made a little bit.ly link yeah. out of it. So bit.ly slash 2022 horticulture show. And once again, entries are due November first at the fairgrounds 8 a.m to 8 p.m something like that 9 a.m to 8 p.m i can't remember the times but uh yeah so all day we'll be there all day accepting entries Nine to eight and uh the, the entries will be on display until they don't want you to pick them up ahead of the time on the 13th after 6 p.m on the 13th or most of the day on oh, 9 a.m to noon on the 14th so any other questions? Questions. It's like we have something in the chat how many, here. How many of you are going to enter a plant in the fair this year? Yay! It's fun. Big bucks. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be fun. It's it's a lot of fun to see what other people are growing. And you might be surprised. I mean, look at some of these little ones that I have. They might do very well. Who knows? Okay. No more questions? No, that's it. And that's it for us. Then. I'd like to thank um, Aileen for making such a great um, presentation of all of her plants and, and letting us learn from what she's got in her yard and garden. So let's give her a big round of applause. Thank you.